I'm not going to try to get around to our Bowling Green community <coughs> people because I'm going to get in trouble if I do that. But uh, uh, right off the bat, right here next to me is uh, my brother Dave and his wife Laura from up in uh, Brighton, Michigan. And we've got uh, their uh, son Brian and uh, uh, his wife Samantha. Aww. And tucked away, buried under those kids in the corner is uh, uh, Meredith, our niece. And uh, so they've all come down from Michigan for this today, and how about that? Maybe a special round for them. Uh, we start to reach back in time. Uh, the first church Mary Jane and I uh, served coming out of seminary was Warren Avenue Presbyterian Church in Saginaw, Michigan. Uh, and uh, we have some of the folks that were part of that gang uh, that are here today. They're uh, lining the wall over there, Chuck and Debbie Davis, Shirley and Roger Scoville, and they came down from uh, Saginaw and Bay City, Michigan, to, to be here. And those, those know old, old stories. And uh, they all carried all of the Saunders boys on their hip at diff different times to get them to shut up during the church services. <laughs> So we're, we're delighted to have them here. Uh, our next stop along the line, thank you. Our, our next and longest stop was, uh, we lived in Albion, New York, which was in uh, the greater Rochester area. And uh, uh, we have a dear friend and the uh, former organist, choir director, kind of everything uh, at, at that church. On a, on a magnificent organ that they had back there, Hook and Hastings from 1860 or something like that. And uh, but Annette Pearl is here uh, to be with us t today, and uh, what a treat. She came on over. Well, uh, she is. That's right. She was swimming at midnight in our pool last night, so she is pretty close to family right there. We'll give, we'll give her props for that. So. <laughs> And they were introduced in church, but of course, uh, Mike, Andy, April, Nathan, uh, so, so much uh, uh, right uh, ingrained in our hearts. And uh, what a thing from, uh, well, from Brooklyn, from Manhattan, from San Francisco, uh, and then Mike's working in Livonia right now. So anyway, we're, we're so grateful to be here for this. Uh, here's where I probably got myself in trouble. Mary Jane Hull and I missed a sort of out of town ish folks. And uh, if, if nobody's running crying out of the room, uh, maybe, I, maybe I caught everyone. But uh, we're so very grateful. But of course, the big group is this church family and folks out of the Bowling Green community. And uh, you know what you mean to us. So enough said. <laughs> just about to begin. So Michael wanted to know when we would start because he apparently will be doing some filming. And we'll be talking more about that a little bit later during this program. A new record was set this morning. It seems... <laughs> See, they're ahead of me already. The new record was said it was, it was a great service. It really was one of the best. You made, you made my wife cry again. You're good at that. And I noticed tears in a lot of other people's cheeks and so forth uh, this morning, too. One hour, 32 minutes, and 13 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully done. Okay, we have a, a, a lot of special presentations uh, that will take place uh, here this morning. And Chris Dunn 
Is Chris, uh, he's not back in the kitchen, is he? There he is, he's coming up. Chris Dunn has the first of these special uh, presentations. Uh, it is my distinct pleasure as a member of the session and as part of that, I'm the chair of the personnel committee. I have an announcement to make about a recent award in progress for the Saunders. At our session meeting on September 24th, which happened, I think, to be in the Saunders home, is that right? Is my memory correct? Yeah, it was. Um, the elders voted unanimously to grant the status of Pastor Emerita and Pastor Emeritus to Pastor Mary Jane and Pastor Gary. Some of us may be familiar with these terms in the context of their use in an academic setting, for example, at BGSU, but conferring this honor within the context of the protocols of the Maumee Valley Presbytery follows a different path. For, for one thing, there can be a lengthy wait, sometimes years, while the Committee on Ministry considers this designation in the context of the total life and health of the congregation. Now, I wish there was a way that I knew about that we could actually speed that up in some way. And so those of you familiar with the Committee on Ministry, maybe you can give us a few tips about that afterwards. The status of emerita or emeritus is built usually, at, for the pastors, is built usually on at least 10 years of successful pastoral tenure. There is no authority or duties associated with this honorary status, nor are there any special privileges or perks. Rather it is, and I don't want to say simply, but rather it is a major formal recognition for ministry well done. And I'm sure you can echo that with a little applause again. So eventually, the Committee on Ministry will, will approve the session's intent. And there will then be a vote by the entire congregation. We'll designate the Saunders as Pastor Emerita and Emeritus, and we'll be able to officially appreciate their leadership, compassion, steady insistence on ministry in the name of God's love. I also imagine, although I don't know for sure, that when this happens, the pastors will be allowed to attend that service where that <laughs> honor will be bestowed. I hope we can do that. The uh, Presbytery will allow us to do that. Uh, so uh, stay tuned for those developments. Thank you very much, and another round of appreciation for our pastors. We thought we'd double tip with the Duns because uh, Susan Dunn has a special presentation. And before Susan comes up with that presentation, do be thinking about words that you may want to use when you get, have an opportunity to come up here and express your feelings for these two a little bit, a little bit later. So Susan, I'm here. there here we are. Marching party. Okay. Susan Dunn, as you can see, is our extraordinary quilter, and she's always liked this image because the many sizes and colors of hands kind of symbolize diversity, and the tree is a symbol of life, so there you have it. We know that our hands are meant to do God's work in the world, and for the past 10 years, our pastors have encouraged us to do just that, the work of God in the here and now. Susan guarantees handmade completion of this quilt, at which point it will go to the pastor's home or remain here to continue to inspire us all. And I have a reminder to all of you that your homework is to write out those cards on your table. 
just one more thing. I'm going to ask people in the next couple of weeks to sign around the edge. So I'll be bringing this back to coffee hour. If you want to sign today, you can, but I'll, I'll, it'll be reappearing so people get a chance to sign. The bottom says, and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. My picture broke the projector, is that what you're saying? We have a few slides here to uh, for all of you to see. You want, you have, here we go. Continue. All right. As you watch the slide, you know, one of the things these two people did uh, was get so involved in the community, and we all know that. And uh, because of that, the uh, the mayor of this community has a proclamation. Well, Mayor Edwards is not here, but Sandy Rowland of City Council is here. So, Sandy, come on up, and I know you have a proclamation of which you are not going to read all of it, but you'll read some of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Quite an honor to be here on behalf of the mayor, who really sincerely wanted to be here. He had a family event last night in Cincinnati. He's driving home this morning, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he didn't show up before this whole thing is over. <laughs> but he was very, very uh, pleased and proud to make a proclamation and I'm not going to read it to you because it does take about an hour and 32 minutes and 15 seconds. So, um, <laughs> so I'm just going to give you the highlights. And he points out that, that uh, it was only 10 short years ago when you came to Bowling Green and you just dug in right away with working for the community. And Mary Jane, you were on the um, Human Relations Commission almost immediately. You served as co-president or co-chair, chair, and are you in your third term now? I know, this is it. Oh yeah, she does get termed out after three years, and that's, that's quite a shame. And during your work with the Human Relations Commission, you worked with City Council to um, create uh, a resolution to make Bowling Green a welcoming community, to well, a, a particularly geared at welcoming our, welcoming our immigrant friends to Bowling Green, to make us more prosperous and a better community. Um, and then Gary, you have of course represented the word Nyat, not in our town, uh, louder and more clearly than anyone else has. And you also are the person that was responsible for coming up with the interdenominational breakfast, which is a huge success in our town every spring. So, um, there's just a lot you have done. You were honored by being named the recipients of the I Love Bowling Green Award uh, by the Bowling Green Chamber of Commerce not too long ago. And um, the icing on the cake is this. The mayor um, has proclaimed today, uh, Sunday, October 6, 2019, as the Reverends Mary Jane and Gary Saunders Day in the city of Bowling Green. <laughs> Uh, we are, yeah, we're going to rush and get Main Street done before the end of the day, just for you. That's a request from you. Uh, I'll get out there and start working now. So as many birthday cards often say, this is your day, enjoy it. I just want to say, this really is your official day in Bowling Green. Thank you. Okay. Enough of this talk about some music. We have the Rose Brothers here. 
Aaron and Abraham, and uh, they were, it was, what they did this morning up there was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And I suspect this will be as good, maybe even better. Oh, well, there you go. So, the Rose Brothers. It is amazing how much talent we have in this congregation, and I'm sure the Saunders would, would agree with that. It's pretty remarkable. All right, now comes the time when you will have an opportunity to express your love for these two. We don't want this to last all day. Well. The Steelers kick off in 10 minutes. So I'm going to, I'm going to miss that 
I don't, but most of you people in here probably remember Johnny Carson. Some, maybe not, he was the first of the Tonight Show. He had a routine that he did around Christmas time called Dickie the Stick. Why should parents go out and spend a lot of money on these expensive, elaborate gifts? Just buy the kids a stick. If they have an imagination, they can use a stick. It can be any number of different things. It, it can be, you know, a baseball bat back in those days. It could be a rifle. It could be a baton. Well, this cane, it can be used as a cane. It can also be used, and if necessary, will be used as a hook. <laughs> So we're limiting people to two minutes, all right? And, and if it goes a bit over two minutes, I've got the hook. I'm not afraid to use it. So who would like to get the ball rolling? Who would like to get the ball rolling? Here we go. Gary and Mary Jane. Uh, we met in seminary. Gary and I played basketball together. Gary played better. <laughs> I will tell you that. Um, so in some sense, when we were getting ready to begin our ministry, we were together. I was moderator of the Synod of the Covenant when you came. And I was part of your installation. I gave the charge to the pastor. I must have done a good job. You were here for 10 years. And then I was able to convince them, a little more convincing for one than the other, to go to Camp Rejoice. I'm known as Camper Dave, and some of your kids know me as that. And they were a great addition to the camp. Um, Gary stabilized senior high um, as a counselor. Mary Jane, you've done the lessons for, for all of them. Uh, led worship. But, but your blessing and your spirit at camp has been wonderful. Um, you don't always see that, but you saw some of the pictures. They've got the t-shirts to prove they've been there. <laughs> I've got a few more t-shirts, but they, they've got to, But it's been wonderful working with you. You've both been good presbyters. On behalf of Presbytery, I uh, uh, thank you for all your work and your service. Um, I had three sons. And one of them played at my final service on the oboe. Different instrument, but but um, I will tell you, all my sons are taller than me. You didn't get that, but but <laughs> but uh, you were blessed by having wonderful sons, wonderful family, and a wonderful church community to be part of and part of this Presbyterian. May God continue to bless and strengthen you in all of your living and all of your service for the justice of God. Thank you. There we go. So for those that don't know me, I'm Amanda. I've been going here pretty much as long as Mary Jane and Gary have been here. I think there's only one year difference. And um it's a blessing to have pastors that make you not afraid to invite someone to church. Um, I grew up in a very conservative town, and so it made it hard for me to want to invite people to my congregation just because I was always afraid, you know, what would people think of me? And then as I went to college and I made all these friends of different faiths and different backgrounds, and then my second year, sophomore year started and I came here and I was like, I can invite anyone here because it doesn't matter what they believe or what they think or feel or who they are. They're going to be welcomed, not just by the congregation, but by Mary Jane Gary. And I thank them so much for that. And that is something that I will take away. And that's part of the reason why the song that they sang makes me cry every time I hear it is because it's one of those things where, sorry, I'm talking very fast. It's one of those things where um, I just feel very blessed by it. And these two have helped me hear my call several times. And so I want to thank you both for that. And I feel a pure joy in saying that I will be friends with my old pastors. There we go. One more, at least. Um, so, <laughs> he's 
So me and Maggie um, and Ella, we're speaking on behalf of Ella as well. We wanted to thank you for our amazing um, confirmation um, experience. And there, there was some inside jokes, and and those were fun. And um, but me, Ella, and Maggie have been here since we were young, and it was a, a pleasure to be able to grow up underneath your mentor and guide me. So we will, we will be missed. We're reading about finding God in the faith of others. Faith. And when I came here finding uh, a trust and a deep faith in the Christian faith was something that was roiling within me. Do I believe all these things? How do I believe everything? And we had those services after, or those classes after the service. And I was so grateful for that. And then the thought comes in this book, well, if we believe so many others have very deep and resilient faiths that we could find courage and understanding from, where does that leave us? And I will always remember that when I was very sad and you started praying, Pastor Gary, oh, good and gracious God. And so often you would talk with Mary Jean about God's love, always about God's love. God is always there with us. And that's special to our faith. Our good and gracious God, who we can have embracing us and Jesus always walking beside us. And I thank you for that. Anybody else? Oh, yes, we have one more coming at least again. Um, my name is Michael Evans. My wife, Linda, back there. We're probably uh, some of the newest members of this church. Um, we were longtime members at the Grand Rapids Presbyterian Church. Uh, as they took a change in direction and philosophy, we started looking uh, for another church. <laughs> When we walked in this door, we were greeted with openness, with kindness, and really a positive message that we could go forth with. Um, the whole idea was the church is welcome to all, and that's a wonderful, wonderful belief. So thank you for your, your time, your, your openness, your showing of love, and what, what this church has done. So thank you. I'm 70 mm -hmm. and I've been attending this church since I was two. What I appreciate that you have done is held this church together through changes and brought us into the community and made the changes that need to be made. And I really appreciate that. That I feel like this is my church and you've really done a good job of keeping us together. Thank you. Wes, Romeo. Okay, I'm the middle brother. Uh, our older brother, Don, uh, can't be with us. He's a couple years older than I am and much frailer than I am, so travel from California wasn't possible. Um, but we're just up the road in a place near Ann Arbor, if that rings a bell with anybody in Ohio. <laughs> 
and we're equidistant from Michigan State, so we're a double whammy family. But you know, we're, we're visitors here. Here is my lifelong brother, and one thing that comes to mind is, and this is something I remind our children and grandchildren, that every generation stands on the shoulders of those that came before them. And uh, I was thinking that at our mother's funeral, Gary spent much time with mom in terms of what she would like at her funeral. And the signature hymn was, uh, the church is one foundation. And I thought maybe we would hear that today, but maybe you guys can enjoy it some other day. But my mom and dad were born in time for the Roaring Twenties, followed by the Dust Bowl, followed by the Great Depression. They were both born in Boston, 10 houses apart and four months apart. So picture a couple that were sweethearts, probably from the age of two or three, up until the day that the Lord took my dad home. Um, but I do think looking at the struggles they went through as a couple, and their faith in the Lord, despite some very difficult circumstances. My dad, our dad, was not in the war, but he was one of the scientists in the background that worked on the weapon that ended the wars. And it haunted him for all his life. But, you know, they were deep, solid Christian folks and they are laid side by side up on Cape Cod. And when we all go to heaven and see each other and greet each other, I think they will look at Gary and say, good job, son, good job, well done. You have done well in respect to the family as well as respect to the Lord. And he sure did pick uh, a brilliant and gifted and caring and loving bride. So speaking on behalf of the family, going back, I'll say two or three generations, the Lord brought Gary to a point and there was Mary Jane and together they went off and served the good people of San Diego, the good people in Northern Michigan, even the good people in New York. And I, I say that because I mentioned earlier today that Gary and I and Don were born and lived on Grand Island, New York. And the woman said something like, well, we all have our crosses to bear and we really feel sorry for you. But on behalf of the family, Gary, you, you are the star because you carried a family tradition and a tradition that dates back 2,000 years. Faith, obedience, goodness, caring, and loving. And Mary Jane, you were perfectly suited to join him in that uh, endeavor. So let's give it up for my young brother, Gary. Your brother went over two minutes, but I, 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 just, I just didn't have the heart to use the hook. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. Okay, we've got an all-state swimmer coming up here. I'm not going to be able to get out everything that I really need to say, but uh, thank you for all the service that you've done here, um, everything you've done for me and for the church and everyone in the church. Uh, you, um, 
your leadership uh, will not be forgotten. And uh, thank you. Mr. Lane could have gone on for 10 minutes. I wasn't going to use a hook on him. He's a lot bigger and stronger than that. Okay, here we go. Some more comments. When there's a change in the pastorate, it's always a little bit wary, not just as a change in leadership and anything. But when I heard that Mary Jane had seen the Beatles in concert, I knew everything was going to be all right. <laughs> I want to thank you for what you did with the music at our church. Uh, I know there were some rocky days at the beginning, but I'm so glad you brought your acoustic guitar in the region. And, uh, just want to thank you for that part of our service, for the music that uh, guided us through worship. Thank you. All right, well, we'll finally just put the just before the buzzer. <laughs> Have to use the hook on him. <laughs> I grew up in the South, and I grew up in a Baptist church. It was a wonderful church, except that it had a flaw that wasn't giving up. And <clears throat> My mother, when I turned 14 and could get a, a, a driver's permit uh, and so she could teach me how to drive, uh, my mother uh, wanted me to drive whenever we took Eva, uh, a woman about this tall, uh, African American, whom I dearly loved because we, she was so joyous and we we enjoyed telling funny things to each other. Anyway, the first time I drove to take Eva home, my mother, who always insisted in coming along, had Eva sit in the front right seat. I, of course, was in the driver's seat, and Mom sat in the back seat. And I was horrified. I mean, I thought, my gosh, I don't know what to do here, but I'm just going to drive and act like nothing has happened. And I, so we drove out in the country to where Eva's family was, and I wouldn't have said anything to her Eva. But after we, you know, got her out and we greeted some of her family, and then we drove back because she only worked there two afternoons a month, okay? And uh, but so it was twice a month uh, that I would, you know, then drive the car back. And when we got home, I says, Mom, I says, this, this isn't right. I says, you know, you should have been sitting up there, and Eva should have been sitting back there. And she said, why? She says, you know, God loves everybody. And that is true of a lot of other people in this country, not just African Americans. And God's love for everybody has not been coming out of our churches, but it has come out of us. Thanks to those pastors who helped us turn toward a more like church. And we should all appreciate that because it made us more complete Christians. contact with everybody in here so it looks like we can be on our way. Let me say happy
it talk about talented people. This is another one, and she has a very special presentation to make, Debbie. Gary and Mary Jane. I know one of the things that you will do in this is having the community here and outside of this church as part of your daily schedule and part of your daily life. And Mary Jane, recently you wrote that church will always be my true home. I was asked by the congregation to paint a small painting in honor and in memory of Mary Jane and Gary. And I tried to think, what could that embody? Understanding the physical space of the church, but also the outside of this building. And what came to mind was that precious courtyard and that beautiful foundation stone that stands there that has six words on it. First Presbyterian Church founded 1855, built 1860, rebuilt 1888. And to me, it represented a legacy and a history of not only our generation, but all of those that came before us and the younger generation we have now in this church. And I know, because I can see from Church Street, nights where people gathered around that stone people in need have come through those doors and passed that stone people that are celebrating joys have come by that stone those that have had sorrow and those that need counsel and help and so i decided that's the stone i'm going to paint because it's not a perfect stone it has cracks in it and it is weathered many many years but I think of how strong it is and how it has represented the endurance of this church and now how Mary Jane and Gary are part of the legacy and the history of that church. So when you gave it that painting, I hope that you are reminded of all of us as part of your congregation and all those that you have served in joy and in need. I suspect we'll all get a chance to see it before we leave. Okay, more talent. Uh, uh, Ed Cooling, he ducked out the back door. Okay, he's, he's putting his stuff together. Very okay. <laughs> the multi talented. Dr. Ed Dooling. Uh, just a word before I start this. Uh, where's Nettie? Uh, Nettie sat with Josh at a game yesterday. Josh is recital today. Josh Wang, his master's recital. Or he would probably, I was going to try to lure him down here. Uh, and, and so on. So I wanted, uh, wanted you guys to know that. Oh, hi. I'm Ari Shapiro from NPR. <laughs> and we're doing a new series on retirement. And we want to come out here to the heartland of America, the flyover country, and see what people do when they retire. And we want to see what they're up to. And so here we are in Bowling Green, also known as Bowling Green, Ohio. And we are here to interview Mary Jane Saunders and Gary Saunders. Or is it Sam? It's Saunders. Okay, and anyway, and we're going to interview them here 
in just a minute. And this is a tape that was recorded a couple days ago. And they have just sent about 40 Presbyterian pastors. So now we got to get ready. <laughs> And remember, I've got a hook over here. This is going to take more than two minutes. My bunion's gotten worse. Well, hi. I'm Mary Jane Saunders. We've just been retired now for a few days. And uh, we've been out shopping and you know, buy things and uh, look at this. Isn't this great? And and now that I've retired, I can get rid of these stodgy old flat shoes that I've worn for years as a pastor because we never know what we might have to do. And so we wear sensible shoes at all times. But now I got to tell you, I'm looking forward to this. And not only have I changed, but look what's happened to Shirazorus. It's like a Wagnerian transformation. <laughs> Even though I'm retired, I still got some of my trappings, but I'm going to make a few changes here. And what I'm going to do to earn a little extra cash is I'm going to write fun songs for churches on demand. When the phone rings, I'll just look in the concordance and see what they want me to do, and I'll write it just for them, right on the spot. Gary's going to do this too, with the quirky little plays that he's back there working on right now. Uh, are you back there? Yeah, good. All right. So we're pulling together a few, a few things to do here. The other thing we're going to do is edit church bullets. By noon on Thursday, you'll get it back at 3 p.m. on Friday. Just as when you run it through the machine. Yeah, great. Uh, and so either of those little tasks, or the first three would be, would be fine. So, let's see. What? Supper. Yeah, it's red beans and rice tonight. <laughs> no, no, there's no spice in it. I said rice. <laughs> no, it's not hot. No, they're not cold either. What do you want? Cool beans. Cool beans. All right. Well, yes, yes, that'll be awesome. All right, now. Oh, here's my first call. Hello. You like uh, what? What now? What, what? What? Oh, you want animals in the song? But you're you're Coptic Christian, so you don't want any of them that have to, that, that are unclean that you can't eat. So we got we got to sing about animals, but none that we can't eat. All right, let's see what we can do here. So we get out. All you listeners that are watching this, I'm. You remember Mrs. Tudball and Carol Burnett? <laughs> I'm walking like that. All right, so let's see. We're looking at the recording. Oh, okay, we're ready to go. So here we go. <laughs> Sparrow, dove, fly, and lamb. Don't eat pigs, they're full of ham. <laughs> Eagle, raven, cattle, sheep. Don't eat things that are lower down on a sheep. <laughs> St. Peter. Yeah. All right. <laughs> read your Bible, people. Read your Bible. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of our chapter and verse now. Happen to St. Peter, the lower down. All right. Oh, wait. Hello? Hello? Oh, oh, oh. oh what? Wait, hold on. What? What? Yeah, yeah, I think this is somebody that wants something really weird. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you want to play too. You want to play that has all the places in the Bible that have the word and in it? <laughs> what? Well, the concordance I have isn't big enough for that. Gary, did you hear that on the extension? Oh, we put old phones back in our house. We threw ourselves out. Right. <laughs> yeah? What? Oh, you're all in? Well, that's great. And you're pretty far down that road, too. Right, okay. Great. All right, let's see. I'm going to have to really get some help on this. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Oh. Now, that concordance I had wouldn't work, but I'm glad we saved it. We didn't throw this out. 
We didn't let Dave Montgomery have it. We didn't let anybody have it. It's the I'm Exhausted Concordance. Look how thick this book is. Now, let's see. And, I'll be at this all day. But maybe that's about enough. So let's see how this comes out with the and song. And then we'll get to play later. All right, let's see. I have press by all of you. <laughs> I see. Here we go. Adam, Eve, David, and Goliath, even him. Oh, wait, we missed one. Adam, Eve, David, and Goliath. They have to be in order of the scripture. Abraham and Isaac, even Timothy and Stephen. I don't know. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Naomi, and Ruth, and Noah, and the ark. And the people all said, Amen. Should we take a few minutes to recover? <laughs> Thank you, Ed. All right, there's some exciting. Adrian, are you? You'll be ready for this. Some exciting news. I've been in contact with people at Universal Studios in Hollywood. Some people are, buy, are still buying this. I thought they'd read it. Better. And they tell us because of the tremendous work these two have done, a major motion picture is in the works. Tentatively entitled The Life and Times of Gary and Mary Jane Saunders. At this point, and it's going to cover their entire, their entire uh, ministry, including the time, I think it was 1992, they said, that they did conduct a Sunday morning church worship service in less than an hour. And I know that's, I know that's on the border of disbelief, but it happened. It will be featured in this film. No. Now, they're, they're casting you know, folks to, to play the parts. Uh, in their early, the early part of their career, they've already uh, auditioned something like 10 or 11 12-year-olds to play the part of Mary Jane. <laughs> and if, and if, we're, if we're set, they won't, they, are, are we set? I'm almost out of material here. <laughs> but they have, they, they did cast the person that will be playing Jerry Saunders in this movie. Now it's 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 in the very early stages. It's, it's it won't be released for quite some time, but we'll keep you posted on all of this. But we do have uh, here we go. The person that will be playing the part of Jerry Saunders. It, will this like? It'll, it'll get brighter. I mean, this was a no-brainer. It's it's Mo Rocca. That that would be that's Gary on the left and Mo on the right. So we'll have uh, much more, you know, on this as time goes by. One final thing that I have, Kathy, if you would, Gary it was mentioned earlier. Gary was a basketball player at Marietta High School. Went on to play college ball at Denison University. I tried to get statistical stuff back in those days. I couldn't find any. So Gary, you can tell us you, you average 22 points a game. Nobody's going to know. <laughs> I want you to open that. I want you to open that right now, because even when he was at Denison, there was a connection. I think you probably know what this is. There was a connection. <laughs> to Bowling Green State University. Gary's playing basketball. In his dorm room, 
Edison University, he had a poster of Nate Thurman. Well, Nate Thurman was maybe the greatest basketball player ever at BGSU, played in the early 60s. Nate went on to play in the NBA, was voted one of the 50th top players, best players in the NBA over the first 50 years of the NBA. But Gary, I told you I was going to get this for you, but it wasn't easy. But I want you to hold that up and let people see just what that is. It is the official BGSU Nate Thurman bottlehead. <laughs> I've been trying for six years to find one of these, and we finally got one. So Gary, I hope that finds a prominent spot wherever you guys wherever you guys wind up. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay, we have, we now we have another presentation. You're going to like this. I, I, I think maybe better than Nate. Gail Swanka is uh, here to make that presentation. Gail. Well, since I have the microphone, um, uh, my um, first off, my daughter was unable to be here, and she she just texted me and wanted me to make sure that you 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 knew that she was thinking about you. But she's three days away from fall break, which means every professor on her at Ohio State is giving her something to do this week. So maybe I'll see her later. Um, but you know, when she was she was probably about ten when I remember you doing a sermon where you said, you know, parents, you may want to let your students step out of the room. They, this may be a little bit ma too mature for them to hear right now. And there was a mother who was there ready to sweep away the kids who were of middle school age at that point. Uh, and she turned to me and said, can I stay? Can I listen to this? So I thank you for, for making her want to hear sermons. <laughs> and for making her and me learn more about our faith, to um, explore ourselves, what it really means to be a good Presbyterian, a good Christian. Um, thank you for that. And for um, being there when I went through life changes myself, when I retired, and somehow you and the church managed to find things to help fill my time, <laughs> which is part of the reason why I get to be here tonight. <coughs> And for things like being one of the few people in Bowling Green who appreciate Buffalo Bills and can talk about Buffalo Bills games in the early 90s, which went into overtime for playoffs versus Houston. You remember that. We've talked about that one. And I still have the Flutie Flakes box. <laughs> um, I get to make a presentation on behalf of the congregation. Uh, this is this is one of the perks of being treasurer of the church. Uh, your friends at the church um, have uh, collectively contributed to this gift and wanted you to know how much they care about you, how much they'll miss you, and hope that this will find a good home. Thank you. Kai Blosh on the uh, activities today, unless anybody has some closing comments. These two just were great. So as we, you guys, you guys have any closing comments? Anything you would like to say? <laughs> Don't worry, I put the hook away. <laughs> We really don't have a lot to say. You've been listening to us for 10 and a half years. So uh, you, you know most of what we would tell you. Just that we want you to know um, it is time to retire. We really feel that, we know that. But it's, it's really weird to be leaving 
the best church that we can imagine. And a challenge for us in the days ahead is going to be to find any kind of community that's going to even come close to what we had here. And I thought the service this morning, no matter how long it was, <laughs> the music is like a fulfillment of a dream we had ten and a half years ago. The spirit, the joy. Aaron, you're a gift from God. And Ed has been a gift from God for the last several years. And uh, it just it's just amazing. And we keep thinking, oh, and the church is in such good shape. And now we're leaving. Uh, but those friends of ours who know things say that's the time to leave. And because we're not worried about the future of this church. This church is going to be just fine. I'm going to continue to do God's work here in this place and have an impact on our community and also on the world. Because that's what you do. And you do it really, really well. It's been a pleasure and an honor to serve here for the last 10 and a half years. There have been some good times, there have been some bad times, <laughs> but we got through it all together. And so, again, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I just add one thought. I remember when we came from Western New York, we had been there 24 years, raised our kids, a uh, major life change time for us, and uh, had that downsize dramatically, and that move uh, came in the middle of a blizzard-ish, uh, uh, and uh, remember that move, our kids sure remember that move, because uh, uh, it, it was something. And uh, we had some very dear friends back in New York that said, you guys are crazy to make a move like this. But it was uh, our sense of the Lord's leading, and uh, that's always been the, uh, the thing. It's the thing for, for all of us together. But I remember um, in the early going, when we had, there were some... There were some tough times in those first uh, years there as we were shifting some things in the church culture. And uh, somebody pointed out that the, the, the Saunders had gone all in on this move here. And I hadn't really thought of it that way, but I really appreciated that because we were. We, we were all in. And the thing that became clear over time was that this is a church that was willing to go all in. Um, and I, I think around the different ministries of this church, uh, the, the worship, the, the music, uh, the leadership, the community activity, but the, the, the identity of, of what does it mean, no kidding, to be a, a church in this place with our theology, uh, downtown in this day and time and the circumstances of Bowling Green. And this church was willing to to look around and go all in where we felt the, the calling of the Lord. And I guess uh, the, the, the charge, if we get to leave the charge behind, is don't be a church that settles. It is so rare to have a church that has the capacity to not settle. The community and the country are filled with churches that settle. It's, it's a nice, it's a nice place to go. It's, it's you know, it's, it's kind of pleasant, good place to raise your kids, that sort of thing. This church is that, but then it has a whole other layer. And I would just, uh, it would be my hope and prayer, and I think both of ours, that uh, we'll be reading for years and years and years about uh, First Presbyterian Church of Bowling Green and uh, new new uh, doors that have swung open and that you've helped swing open for, for different causes, for different people, uh, in your own ranks. Uh, who knows? Was it the Ephesians thing said? Are they more than our minds can, can, can imagine what the Lord has in store? But, uh, but don't sell. One more time. We love you because God first loved us. We love you. Because God first loved us, we love, we love, we love, because God first loved us.